Hello everyone. I am very excited for today's video because today I get to finally share the results of my clay soil amendment test. If you've not already, be sure to check out the first video linked above where I explain each of the amendments that I'm using in detail. But here's a quick rundown of how I set up my experiment. So as many of you know, I am dealing with pretty heavy clay soil here in Ohio. I found some of the worst soil on my property, dug it up and added it to nine different containers. One of those containers was a control and to the remaining eight containers, I added liquid lawn aerator, peat, sand, green sand, mushroom compost, gypsum, biochar, and manure. Then in each of those containers, I planted one transplant of a pepper variety called Basket of Fire. This is a hot pepper bread specifically for growing in containers or compact spaces. I transplanted those peppers on August 4th and added two tablespoons of natural fertilizer to each transplant at planting time. I debated about whether or not to add fertilizer when I was planting, but I figured that by adding the same amount of the same fertilizer to each container that I wouldn't mess up the results of my experiment in any way. And as one astute viewer of my first video mentioned, some of the amendments that I'm using are actually adding nutrients such as NPK to the soil. So by adding that fertilizer to each of the containers, it might help to level out the playing field just a bit. I also made sure to water each container at the same time with the same amount of water every time that I watered them. So here are the plants about a month and a half after transplant. I was surprised to see how much smaller the plant in the peat container was, and to a lesser degree, the liquid lawn aerator plant, and that while the biochar plant was nice and full, the fruit seemed to be later to mature. The largest plant of all was planted in the container amended with cow manure. And here are the plants on October 17th, a few days before the hard frost nailed them. Now I did measure the height and width of each plant on October 17th and a rundown of mature plant size from smallest to largest is the liquid lawn aerator amendment plant, then the peat, sand, green sand, mushroom compost, the control, gypsum, biochar, then manure. I was also interested to take a look at the root system of these plants. So I tried my best to carefully dig up each plant. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of my small feeder roots in the process. So these are all of the plants laid out here. You kind of can get a feel for plant size and root system size, but there's really no big surprises here. The largest plants also tended to have what appeared to be the most well-developed root systems. I also wanted to look at drainage. Now I started to notice some trends in the different containers as I was watering throughout the season, but it wasn't until I actually came out here and timed how long it took the water to absorb in each of these containers that some things really, really stood out. So take a look at this. I added three gallons of water to each of these containers and film them for just over three minutes or as long as it took the water to absorb. Now these are all time-lapsed obviously, but it will still give you a really clear picture of the different absorption rates in each of these containers of soil. So this is the control. At three minutes, the water was almost absorbed with a few small puddles still sitting on the soil surface. Next, the biochar. At three minutes, the water was almost absorbed with a few puddles still sitting on the soil surface. But keep in mind that with the biochar, I did have to end up using a slightly smaller container. This was a 10 gallon instead of a 15 gallon. So if this had been a 15 gallon, it's very likely that that water at the three minute mark would have been completely absorbed. Next, the liquid lawn aerator. Again, at three minutes, the water was almost absorbed with just a few puddles still sitting on the soil surface. Now here's where it starts to get really interesting. Up next is sand. At three minutes, there's still a significant amount of water sitting on the soil surface. 
Next, I moved on to gypsum. At three minutes, the water is nearly completely absorbed, but look back at the sand, still draining. On to mushroom compost, the water is absorbed completely in two minutes. In the cow manure container, the water is absorbed in just over two minutes. And back to the sand, I think we're almost done draining now. All in all, it took over 15 minutes for this container to drain. For the green sand, at three minutes, the water was almost absorbed with a few puddles still sitting on the soil surface. And peat took a little longer. At three minutes, there's still a good amount of water sitting here, and all of that water was completely absorbed by four minutes. So my big takeaways here were that my mushroom compost and cow manure actually improved the drainage and water absorption properties of my clay soil the most. And that the addition of all-purpose sand actually made the drainage worse as compared to my control container. But I really wanted to see what had happened to the soil itself in this process. So let's dump out each of these containers into a wheelbarrow so we can have a closer look at any changes that the amendments have caused. First, the control. My least favorite part of this test. God, these bags are heavy. This is the unamended soil dug out of my yard. I broke up this soil a fair amount when I first filled these containers, but as you can see, there are still plenty of big, hard clods in this control bag. You can see how when this type of soil dries, it's really hard and compact. Now we have spots where the soil breaks up fairly nicely, but other patches of dense clay that don't want to crumble at all. Next is biochar. Now this texture seems very promising. In general, it's much looser and crumblier with just a few small chunks of heavy clay throughout. Honestly, this seems to have done a remarkable job actually improving the friability of my soil. Now peat. It's hard for me not to love the darker color that the addition of peat imparts into my soil. My brain is hardwired to automatically associate darker soil with higher organic matter content, thereby healthier, more fertile soil. And while this isn't the end-all, beat-all indicator for healthy, fertile soil, it often rings true. But when I actually check out the soil texture, it's obvious that the peat didn't really do anything to break up the clay. There are still big chunks of heavy clay interspersed throughout, and as we saw, the plant grown in this container was one of the smallest of the whole lot. Here's the liquid lawn aerator. You can probably tell already that this batch of soil looks nearly identical to the control batch I dumped already. Big chunks of dense clay that are somewhat difficult to break apart. I really don't see any difference in the texture here as compared to the control. I'm guessing you all know which amendment this is without me even telling you. The addition of all-purpose sand led to a very distinct texture. This actually breaks apart really nicely, belying that poor water drainage that we saw earlier. For some odd reason, I found more grubs in this container than any of my others. Any theories as to why that would be, anybody? Next up, gypsum. This one is very interesting. This batch of soil is wetter than any of the others, leading me to believe that this held on to water the longest. I don't really have an explanation for this, but I definitely don't want my soil holding on to water any longer than it already does. Otherwise, the texture is comparable to my native soil when it's wet, and it's still quite sticky. Cow manure here, and my container ripped open when I tried to move this one, unfortunately. Oh, I don't know if you can see this here, but there are earthworms everywhere. And you can see here too, although there are big clumps of soil, how nicely and easily they break up. Man, there's just so many worms. <laughs> That's awesome. Really nice friability. I don't know how manure does this exactly. It's magic. It's not. I know there's a perfectly sound scientific explanation for how this works, and that's something that I need to do more research on, but I'm really impressed with this amendment. Now, the fact that this is so attractive to earthworms helps that soil texture too, as the worm tunneling and castings benefit the soil greatly. This is mushroom compost. 
a lot of big chunks in there and they are not breaking up. There's an obvious distinction between the loose mushroom compost itself and the big chunks of native clay soil that didn't intermix at all. Now I noticed this one seemed to have really poor texture when I first mixed this up and added it to the container, but my hope was that over time it would improve. It has not. The clay chunks actually seem stickier and denser than in my control. And finally, green sand. Maybe a slight improvement in texture and friability, but I definitely still feel some sticky clay pockets in there. And finally, someone on the first video had asked me if I could take into account the cost and the ease of application when evaluating these amendments, which I thought was a really good idea. So let me rank these out in terms of expense from the cheapest to the most expensive. And keep in mind that I'm using the pricing in my area, and this could vary pretty significantly depending on where you live. The first and cheapest for me was the cow manure. It was free. We've got a lot of local farmers who are more than willing to get rid of some of the excess manure that their animals accumulate. But the ease of application I would rate as moderate to difficult. And that is all depending on how much you actually have to end up shoveling. Some farmers are happy to give away their manure, but you have to come to their stalls and muck them out. If you know a farmer who is willing to let you use their skid steer or will load it for you, that cuts down on a lot of the work that you have to do. The next cheapest amendment was my gypsum, which ended up costing me $4.99 for a two and a half pound bag. And that broke down to 14 cents per application. It was also very, very easy to apply because all I had to do was sprinkle it on the soil surface. And this would be super easy even for a large space if you had like a handheld broadcast spreader or even one of those little pull behind broadcast spreaders that you can attach to your lawn tractor. Next was the liquid lawn aerator. This was pricey up front, $34.95 for a 32 ounce bottle. But when I broke it down to price per application, it worked out to $73. Cents. Now this is another one that was pretty easy to apply. I simply mixed with water and watered onto my container. But for a larger area, you would definitely need something like a hose end sprayer or backpack sprayer to apply. Next was sand. It was $4.99 for a 60 pound bag, which worked out to $2.50 for the application that I used. But for ease of application, I rated it as moderate to difficult. That is because I used a one-to-one -one ratio of sand to soil by weight. And even just doing a very small container, it was a lot of heavy digging and lifting. Sand is quite heavy. So I can only imagine doing a larger space, how much weight you end up hauling and digging and shoveling through that process. Plus with sand, that's not an amendment that you can usually just sprinkle on your soil surface. You would actually need a way to incorporate that into your soil. Next was peat at $12.99 for 2.2 cubic foot container or what worked out to $6.50 per application. For the ease of application with peat, I'd rank as moderate. You still have some digging and mixing, but peat is quite lightweight and relatively easy to shovel and handle and mix into the soil. Mushroom compost was $12.99 for a three quarters cubic foot bag and I used the whole bag. Now this one is a little bit cheaper when you buy it in bulk. I have done that in the past, but still works out to be a relatively expensive amendment. The ease of application, I'd rank as moderate again. It can be a lot of shoveling. This one you can opt to either mix into your soil or just put it onto your soil surface. But unless you have a lot of heavy equipment, it's a fair amount of manual labor. My biochar was $12.99 for a one pound bag. And this one has the potential to get really pricey really quickly. Depending on what ratio you opt for, and I've seen a lot of different ones out there, to do any kind of a decent sized garden, you'd be adding an awful lot of biochar. So for me, unless I have a good way to make my own in bulk, it really prices itself out of contention. Now, ease of application was moderate. Like Pete, it's fairly lightweight and easy to work with. And because because I was working with it on a small scale, I just opened my bag and dumped it out. If you were doing this on a larger scale, there would obviously be more shoveling and digging and mixing involved. And finally, green sand, which cost me $27.99 for a five pound box and worked out to about $14 per application. 
Now the ease of application for this one was quite easy, very lightweight. I simply sprinkled it over the top of my soil and lightly incorporated. But again, this one, if you were on any kind of larger scale would be quite cost prohibitive. So given all of this information, how much did the amendment cost? How easy was it to apply? How much did it actually improve my soil? And how did the plants look that were growing in it? What is the big grand takeaway here? Well, for me, it's that good quality aged cow manure is the clear winner in this scenario. And what's nice is that with this particular amendment, because I have used it for many years on a large scale and been able to actually evaluate the results in a real world type setting, I can tell you for sure that it has made huge improvements in my gardens not just in a small one-time container test. But some other big takeaways that I had were first about the mushroom compost. So mushroom compost was actually an amendment I started using pretty extensively about three years ago in my gardens here at home. I was getting it in bulk, adding it each spring. I thought that it was making a lot of improvements. But after this test, I feel that ultimately I would be better off just sticking with cow manure here. The mushroom compost is expensive. I don't see that it's encouraging as much life in my soil as the cow manure and is not improving the texture nearly as much as I thought it was. Now it is improving drainage, which is important, but I can achieve that as well as getting other good results with other amendments. Gypsum is another no-go for me. This is one that has been extensively recommended recommended to me as well as on the internet in general. The trouble, as I explained in the first video with gypsum, is that it really only is effective with sodic soil, which I do not have here. So I was not actually surprised by these results, but I just really wanted to do this test anyway to see firsthand what would happen. Now, if anyone out there has sodic clay soil and wants to replicate a trial similar to this, I would love to hear about your results because I'm really curious what your soil would look like after a gypsum application. Another big takeaway that was not surprising to me, but I think was important to test, is that all-purpose or playground sand is a big nope. A lot of the research I had read before doing my first video on improving clay soil had said that essentially adding sand to clay soil is going to give you poor texture, poor soil structure, that that tiny little sand will move into the spaces between the clay and actually make that structure worse. And that is exactly what I saw because despite the fact that that texture looked nicer and looser, when I looked at the actual drainage, you could see how slow and terrible that was. And that is the very last thing that I want to be doing is slowing down water drainage in my already poor draining clay soil. Peat may have been one of my biggest surprises. This is an amendment that I know in this area in particular has been recommended for years and years. And when I first mixed that peat into the soil, it made it look so nice. The texture seemed nice. It was nice and dark. I thought, oh, this will be a clear winner. So I was surprised when the plant really didn't perform optimally and also that the drainage didn't improve. Now, part of this may have been because I was growing peppers specifically. Peppers prefer a soil pH between 6.0 and 7.0, which my native soil tends to hover right in that range. By adding peat, which tends to be acidic, I may have changed that pH just enough to make my peppers a little bit unhappy. So it might be interesting to test this with a more acid loving plant. But ultimately, again, the cow manure just did so much better than the peat. I really see no reason to use peat as a garden amendment here. And finally, the liquid lawn aerator. I thought the idea of adding microbes and humic acid and all of these really good things to the soil seemed like a clear winner. So I was really surprised when I saw virtually no improvements at all by the application of this aerator. Now there are about a million lawn, liquid lawn aerating products out on the market. So there's a good chance that some work better than others in certain soils. My other thought is that a product like this might work really well if you have soil which is really, really low in microbial life. So if you have essentially dead soil just adding something might help it a lot. That is not the case here. Despite having heavy clay soil, I do have a lot of life in my soil, a lot of microbes and fungi and bacteria. So adding 
the liquid lawn aerator may have just not made much of a difference in my soil personally. But if anyone has tried one of these products and had really good results, I'd love to hear from you about which specific product you used. Ultimately, I still think the best technique for amending and improving my clay soil is a mixture of amendments and techniques and time and patience. But it is really interesting to me to see what each of these amendments do in this kind of isolated case study. I've already got my next test lined up. I'm planning on doing some different amendments, including leaf mold, wood chips, homemade compost, and chicken manure, amongst other things. But I always like to hear your suggestions. What would you like to see tested out? And be sure to subscribe so that you can catch the next version of this test. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.